Good morning, everybody. It's always a pleasure, as uh, first I told uh, you that uh, uh, although I got my, uh, uh, you know, graduate degrees from the U.S., I think I've, uh, you know, I spent probably more time in Canada. Uh, he 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 did talk about the term that I spent at uh, Winnipeg, uh, but other than that, uh, you know, I've had uh, <coughs> research collaborations with the University of British Columbia. Uh, and uh, my two sons have graduated uh, from Canadian universities. One last year from York University here, at Economics and Statistics, and uh, <clears throat> this year just finished yesterday the graduation at University of Alberta, uh, Mechanical Engineering. So you know my links uh, with Canada uh, are, are are significantly stronger than. Uh, the ones with the U.S. Uh, and it's always a pleasure coming back to York. I love this place. Uh, <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to be talking about today uh, is a little bit about uh, some of the work uh, that is happening in, in Rurki. It's not an exhaustive list by any means. But I just wanted to uh, sh show you that essentially <clears throat> Rurki goes back 168 years. It was set up is the first technological university uh, in Asia and the then British Empire. And in fact, uh, other than Delft University, it's the oldest technological university in the world. Delft started water research a little bit earlier. But uh, you know, I've done a little bit of history. And this is the first place where this term civil engineering came into being. Uh, at that time, the reason why it was called civil engineering was that at Rurki there was both military engineering and everything that was not military engineering was classified as civil engineering. So 1847, it started as Thompson College. <coughs> In 1949, as soon as India became independent, it was the first technological university, University of Rurki. <coughs> and in 2001, uh, by an act of parliament, uh, it became the seventh IIT and the first IIT that was not built from scratch. Otherwise, all other IITs have all been built from scratch. Uh, it's very interesting, um, you know, there's a recording uh, in our uh, library where the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, on November 25th, 1949, when he uh, you know, he was going to, just before he signed the charter, he actually asked uh, that uh, Rurki become the first IIT. So, you know, if at that time the Prime Minister of that then United Provinces had agreed to it, Rurki would have been the first IIT in independent mm -hmm. India. But of course, at that time, you know, he was a very smart politician. He realized that the United Provinces was a very large province. And he was always going to get another IIT. And he already had University of Rurki. So he said, I will not give you the jewel in my crown. Uh, of course, the jewel in the crown had to be given 52 years later. So just, just a little bit of the history. Just to give you an overview, I just wanted to give you a snapshot of what Rurki is today. Uh, we have about 460 faculty members uh, spread across 22 departments. Uh, and the most interesting aspect of it is that the 118 faculty members have joined between 2012 and 2014. So we are, uh, you know, uh, while we have, uh, you know, spread uh, across the ages, uh, today our average age in IIT Rurki is 40.2 years, uh, which from 2000, in 2011 was 50.5 years. So we've, we've significantly lowered our our average age, and so there's a lot of uh, this thing. Uh, we have 8,092 students, and out of that, uh, 1,500 odd are doctoral students. Uh, and 40% of the doctoral students are girls, because that's one of the things that in India, uh, we're, uh, especially in the IITs, we're focused in, because engineering uh, typically, the science and the engineering have typically not had too many uh, women. We have three campuses. Uh, again, this is a legacy of university. IITs do not have three campuses. IITs always have one campus. Uh, we have the largest campus in Rurki. 
Uh, we have a, a smaller campus at Saranpur and a very small campus of 10 acres in, uh, in, in the national capital region. Uh, what we try to focus now is that while we appreciate that blue sky research is very important, uh, we've started looking at the possibility of uh, uh, looking at centers of excellence where you know, multidisciplinary groups work uh, on uh, essentially enabling our vision, which is to attain global level of excellence in education and to create a sustainable and equitable society. And that's the fundamental aspect of IIT Roorkee, that essentially whatever we do, our focus is society. So societal research, which is why the new centers of excellence that you look at are in healthcare, urban design and development and packaging because ultimately that goes out into the society. Of course, you know, you can't go out into the society because we are an academic institution. So what we try to do here is do some of the uh, proof of concept and then it goes out uh, into the industry and you know, gets out to society. Sometimes, of course, our uh, students. Uh, <coughs> you know, uh, there was this in 2013, June, uh, there was this catastrophic flood. In fact, it's known as the Himalayan tsunami. And uh, the entire Himalayas and, and, and the, the state that we are in, Rurki, is in the state of Uttarakhand, which is really the Himalayas. Okay, all the Rurki is in the plains. Uh, and what happened was that this is actually a very, very uh, 10th century uh, temple called Kedarnath. And it just got wiped out, completely got wiped out. And that kind of, uh, you know, we thought that, uh, again, since we work for society, we decided to put together a center for urban design and development at Rurki, which focuses on uh, the various aspects of, uh, uh, you know, looking at urban and regional development. And our whole thought process is that while we have a center for design, uh, urban design and development. Uh, <clears throat> we want to work with the Hill Development Councils. Uh, we want to work with national institutions. And we also want to work with international collaboration. So that ultimately, the whole idea is to look at pro providing solutions. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a bit of an idea of where uh, our uh, you know, faculty members have been working on, on, on society. And there's a ver various aspects of technology for rural development, uh, action plan for societal development, uh, f you know, f facilitation of rural entrepreneurs, and, and strategies for capacity building. These are the, all the different arms of how we engage uh, with society. I just wanted to highlight a few things. Uh, tourism is a huge uh, you know, money spinner. But uh, you know, while the, the developed countries have a standard way of tourism, you know, uh, here it's tourism by accident, really, rather than planned tourism. So what we, try, what we are trying to do is essentially identify what are the issues and kind of try to plan uh, the tourism such that uh, it has the potential to be econ for economic development, but it does not uh, cause uh, you know, uh, environmental degradation, et cetera. So those are the, uh, some of the things that we're looking at, the ecological, the spiritual, the cultural, all of those aspects. I don't want to get into too, too many details. Another uh, aspect is that uh, you know, in, in, in the, all the hill states of India, there's a huge migration from the rural areas to the urban areas, basically because nothing's happening in the rural areas. So what we have a project uh, where what we want to do is we want to highlight. So it basically becomes, uh, you know, we want to highlight cultural tourism as an aspect. So the arts and crafts and culture, uh, and that those become part of uh, the uh, uh, you know generate livelihood, etc. These are some of the things. As I said. <coughs> Again, we, uh, water research is huge uh, in, uh, in Rurki. In fact, uh, Rurki came into being uh, because of water. It was, it was uh, in 1847, it was built 
to build the Ganga Canal. The, uh, so that's why it's all about water. And so we do a lot of work on, on water. Right now, uh, you know, we are, we are doing a very large project, Asian Development Bank funded project, which looks at roads, water uh, structures, as well as water quality uh, and, uh, you know, uh, sewage in the hills. So uh, then, you know, we're looking at zoning policy and so essentially the whole idea is to ensure that there's development while it does not have an effect on the ecology. Another very interesting thing that we have is, uh, uh, you know, uh, just wanted to show you, uh, up in the hills, there's a place called Nainital, which is a beautiful, and it's, it's, it's a lake. Uh, this is Nainital Lake in 2007, okay? This is Nainital Lake in 2011, after intervention suggested by IIT Ruki. So today, it's again, uh, you know, uh, all, uh, all life, life in the water had died in 2007. Now it's back. So again, this is the government implementing solutions that were provided by IIT Ruki. <coughs> we're looking at, uh, you know, generating hybrid energy. There's a lot of areas where uh, electricity is not there purely because transmission uh, lines are very difficult to put up, not because of any other reason. Okay, so what we have tried to develop, what we are trying to develop, this is some, this is a project that's on right now, is look at uh, you know kind of decentralized energy generation, and essentially work on uh, you know uh, energy generation and energy usage at points of place. So what, what these things are being done, we identified two regions, which are essentially about five, seven villages together, okay, and uh, essentially the whole idea is whatever is available. If there's sun available, use photovoltaics. If it's waste, use biomass. Since there's a lot of water uh, current, hydro, hi, but here hydro, what we're looking at is not hydro projects and not even micro hydro projects. We're trying to look at run of the river projects so that you don't stop uh, you know, the water because again, that's an environmental uh, issue. Wind, and then you know, use the diesel to kind of uh, uh, this thing. Although the diesel uh, here, we're not using diesel. We're trying to use, uh, I'll show you later what we are trying to develop. We're trying to develop a, a, a briquette based, uh, you know, Energy. So essentially, all of it is from natural sources. Even the diesel uh, is not uh, diesel in terms of petroleum diesel, but more biodiesel. And then, of course, develop the technology. The, these technologies are fairly standard. The technology over here is the load balancing and, and then actual provision uh, to. Uh, and what we need to do is also we're working with the Central Electricity Authority because a pricing policy is required such that you know, most of these things die out when electricity gets to the area. But if we do a proper pricing policy, you know, these can be used as load balancing, uh, continue to be used as load balancing even when electricity develops there. So these are some of the things. This is again, uh, there's, a, there's a very, very famous uh, Bageshwari shawl that is available in the Kumaon region. It's a very famous shawl. And what they used to do was that they used to essentially work for, with their feet. And there were two aspects. One was productivity, the other aspect. So what we did was uh, we developed a, a kind of a, a electric motor, small one. But the whole idea was not to develop an electric motor. The whole idea was to develop an electric motor, which could be then created and done by the people themselves. So you create like, again, rural entrepreneurs, okay, who actually are doing this. And this is the very simplified kind of thing, but it's increased the productivity by almost you know, both efficiency. So, you know, we've set up the collaborative ecosystem. There's an entrepreneur who, 
who builds this, manages it, and, and then modify, and 6,000 families are, are there. And so it's just uh, you know, better quality control as well as productivity. Again, this is the one that I was talking about. Okay, one of the major things that happens is fires happen every summer. Right now, right now is the time when there are a huge amount of fires. The reason behind it is essentially because a lot of pine needles, dry pine needles, kind of lie on the base of the water and they catch fire. Okay, so what what uh, what today exists is that these people have to carry these to a central area where briquettes are formed. Uh, what we've developed, you know. High initial cost, and then again, you know, you need to this thing, and then paralysis, etc. Industrial. What we've developed in IIT Rurki is actually a forty-dollar equipment, which is either solar or hand-operated, so you don't require electricity at all. Okay, and and the whole idea here is that this can be then taken to the source, and people can make briquettes. And sell it. And in fact, you know, we've our combustion group is working on using these briquettes in standard diesel generation. You know, so, so we've got the whole ecosystem uh, working on, on the entire thing. So the next thing is our center for healthcare engineering. One of the major things in the healthcare engineering is essentially, if you look at it, 95% of the medicinal and aromatic herbs. Uh, in uh, India are in the Himalayas. So we, are, we have a, a large uh, program on trying to go out and identify them and see what we can do. One of them, uh, you know, we've used a plant which is not a medicinal plant. It's a regular plant and this, they've developed a semi-synthetic plant-based anti-cancer drug. It's a plant-based anti-cancer drug. And of course, semi because they've identified the molecule and then synthesized the molecule itself. And now this is being, you know. So this is what I'm saying. Again, this is, here there is collaboration, international collaboration, because the development is done, but then the further process development is done elsewhere. Okay, so these are the possible synergy that you can have. Uh, again, uh, you know, medicinal plants, all about it. Then we have a center for packaging. Uh, why? Because we are the only uh, institution uh, in India which has a pulp and paper engineering research program. There are a lot of education programs in, in packaging, but we are the only one which has pulp and paper and polymer working together. So this is the whole idea over here, again, is to use forest produce and take it into packaging. Okay, uh, there's a very interesting uh, project that our people have done. This is known as end of life cycling of plastic products. Where they've taken plastic, they've developed a process. Again, they've developed the concept in IIT Rookie, which is to take the plastic and make it into some kind of aggregate system and then work with industry to develop composite sheets. Okay, so you've got roof sheets developed from, and there, 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 there are no issues, so they've been tested, etc. and now uh, uh, industry is building it. There's also another kind of thing which I'm not showing here, that from this waste, they've developed molded uh, furniture. And basically because this is all plastic, okay, uh, and uh, you can put it outside furniture, etc. So the whole idea here, as you say, is is how to look at environment and and learn from the environment. Here again is uh, you know they've developed they've taken some algae, a macroalgae collected from an aqueduct which is very close to Ruki, and they worked with it, and they've extracted oil uh, uh, from that algae. This is of course at a this is not at an industrial level, this is still at a lab level. But there's a whole uh, scope that there's a possibility that this can uh, go up. Because essentially because of the humidity, there's a lot of natural algae. And so uh, you know, that can be uh, used. There's another very interesting uh, project, again very uniquely in India. Uh, you know, in, in India, milk, especially during the festive season, there's a huge requirement 
for milk-based sweets. Okay? And uh, there's not enough milk. So what, what the milk suppliers, these milk suppliers are not uh, large suppliers. They're all local suppliers. And what they do is to add bulk to the milk. They put in urea. Sounds horrendous, but it's done. And, and, and this person has, uh, has used uh, you know, uh, gold nanoparticles uh, and, and developed a, a procedure by which, you know, this is it. You plug in the milk, if there's no urea, it stays exactly the same. If there's urea, it changes color. So it's a quick uh, product. And now this is being used by all, uh, you know, front end level, uh, you know, Food and Drug Administration for checking of urea and milk. Again, high science, but leading to a, a, a solution that has a societal impact on it. <clears throat> Again, I was just telling you about, uh, you know, one of the issues of, of all renewable sources and, and non, uh, you know, renewable sources is storage. Okay? Because, you know, you require these huge inverter banks to store the energy that you get from solar and wind, etc. So our people have been doing some work on nanostructure enabled energy uh, devices and they've actually developed a, a super capacitor which can be used for storage of energy. This is of course again at a, at a level of the lab but there's, a, uh, there's some interest being shown uh, by a company uh, abroad because we don't have manufacturing uh, capabilities in India as yet. So this is a Singapore-based company which is probably going to be taking this technology out. Again, you know, just want to run through it. In, in IIT Rurki, uh, we've got a 1.82 megawatt uh, photovoltaic, uh, you know, uh, generation. And 30% of our uh, total electricity consumption comes from photovoltaics. Then we have water heating. Our entire water heating in winter is through solar water heating. And we also have cooking. All the hostel, you know, the dorm, uh, you know, we have food uh, available in uh, the dorms. We call them dorm messes. All of them are using this. And this is, uh, you know, saving 5,000, uh, you know, LNG cylinders uh, per year. So there's a whole, and by the way, all of this is being done by students. This entire project has been identified by students, executed by students, and even today they are monitoring the overall effect effectiveness of this system. We also have a thematic group on aviation research. Uh, there's some work on thermal conduct, conduct, conductance, <coughs> and this is some. This is an area that. There's a lot of big work being going on on superhydrophobicity and drag reduction, essentially because we are working uh, with a company uh, that is into amphibian uh, aircraft. Uh, so that's that's the kind of uh, this thing. Uh, we also have a thematic group on railway engineering. Now it's no longer a thematic group. As of yesterday, it has become a center for railway research, uh, funded by the government of India, and uh, there's a whole lot of uh, things of, on study of longitudinal dynamics of freight train wagons. Uh, we're going to be working on uh, noise reduction in diesel locomotives. Uh, then, you know, structural health monitoring is, is actually uh, my area of work. We have a thematic group on food security where uh, rosaceous plants, uh, rosaceous uh, uh, fruits are a huge thing in the, uh, in the Himalayan region again. You know, that's the 100% the of all our rosaceous uh, uh, fruits are grown in the Himalayas. And so a, a whole group is working on, on using functional geno genomics to improve the quality and efficiency. And, you know, I've been told that, that this is not modification of the genes, so it's not genetically modified, but it's actually a slightly different way of improving the drug resistivity. So, uh, and we also have a, uh, we have a, a school for the hearing impaired where, our, where again our faculty members and students uh, work towards developing technology for hearing impaired children. So this, 
Essentially, the school is, is a lab space for our students uh, and faculty to look at developing technology for hearing impaired children. Very, just a short take through. This is the, the main building of our campus, and it's quite an impressive uh, structure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, as part of the uh, MOU, we also have, uh, we're signing a student exchange program. I think we should, we should probably exchange it. Yes. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.